All right, this is a replacement video for the one that was actually recorded in class in 11.7. My apologies, um, it accidentally got deleted instead of saved, and so I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, um, but to give you an idea of what happened in 11.7, um, if you happen to miss class or needing to review. Uh, we talked about two different kinds of coordinate systems in addition to our typical Cartesian coordinate system, or we would call um, a rectangular coordinate system. The first one is called the cylindrical coordinate system, and you'll recognize that this feels a lot like polar coordinates. You have a point P, it's represented by R, theta, Z. R and theta are much like that they were before, um, a polar representation. Um, and what it is, is if you were to project the plane down into, or project the point down into the XY plane, you would have um, the R theta point. Of course, R is the distance from the origin, and theta is the angle measure from the positive x-axis. Um, Z would be actually the, the you know, upward direction um, that you would get the distance from R theta to the actual point P in three space. Cylindrical to rectangular um, conversions look again like polar ones. X is equal to R cosine theta, Y is R sine theta, and Z is actually just Z. And then going the other direction, X squared plus Y squared equals R squared, tangent theta is Y over X, and again, our favorite z is equal to z. So we're going to do a few examples of conversions now with these, system, uh, these coordinate um, conversions. Uh, so first we're going to convert to cylindrical, from cylindrical to rectangular. Um, the ordered triple that we're given is 6, pi, negative pi over 4, and 2. Um, you'll notice that I wrote r theta z above them. You don't have to do that, but it helps maybe to keep it a little bit straight since we keep moving in between systems here. So I'm going to write those um, frequently where we actually start. Um, so we need to find x, y, and z. We already know z. It's given, right? It's 2. Um, but x is equal to r cosine theta. And if I plug in 6 for r, negative pi over 4 for the angle theta, I can simplify this down, and x is equal to 3 radical 2. Um, very similarly for y, y is r sine theta, 6 is r, uh, theta is negative pi over 4, and this is negative 3 over square 2. Now we're going to convert the other direction, start with rectangular and go to cylindrical. So if we have the order triple 3, negative 3, 7, again z is 7, doesn't have to change, but the x and the y need to change into what the corresponding r theta would be. We know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared, so we should be able to find r. R is either 3 square root 2 or negative 3 square root 2, and we'll talk about how we decide. And then for, for theta, we know that the tangent of theta is y over x, so y is negative 3, x is 3, so the inverse tangent um, of, negative, or of negative 1 is actually negative pi over 4. So now if you think about it, this ordered pair, if we ignore the z component, 3, negative 3, would be in quadrant number 4 in a two-dimensional space, right? So if my theta value is negative pi over 4, then I'm in quadrant 4. So you'll see down here at the bottom, this one right here was actually the first one we found in class, um, because negative pi over 4 would necessitate that the r value, sort of the distance from the origin, is positive 3 radical 2. So you might think, well, how, how does it happen that I get the negative 3 radical 2 and 3 pi over 4? Well, Obviously, tangent of theta is equal to negative 1 in two locations on the unit circle in, um, you know, between 0 and 2 pi. It's happening at either negative pi over 4 or at 3 pi over 4. And, of course, negative pi over 4 has other names, too, but this would be two versions of it. So if my angle instead had had an r, var if my r value instead had been the negative 3 squared of 2, that would actually have told me that I needed to go the opposite direction. So if I went from 3 pi over 4, right, the angle, which would put me in quadrant 2, then I would need to be swinging around to the negative 3 square root 2 um, in order to be in quadrant 4. And you can see my sort of picture up here. I'm in the middle of the paper. So if I were at right here, oops, I meant to use this. If I were over here at 3 pi over 2, here's, um, I'm sorry, at, yeah, 3 pi over 4, Here's my point at 3 square root 2, and so in order to get the point in quadrant 4, I need to go the opposite direction, and it would be negative 3 square root 2. We can also convert uh, equations. So the first one says to convert rectangular to cylindrical. You'll see we started out with z equals x squared plus y squared minus 11, but x squared plus y squared is r squared, so z is equal to r squared plus 11. I'm not sorry, minus 11, and that's it. 
That's all we need to write down because it's in Z and R. Yes, there's no theta in it. That's totally okay. Not everything in three space has three variables either, right? Um, not everything in two space has two variables. So it's perfectly fine that we don't see that. All that means is that the theta value is actually um, anything and it won't change the graph. Uh, number four, convert cylindrical to rectangular and sketch. So we start with R is equal to one half Z. Um, kind of like when we do trig identities, there's often more than one way to approach these problems. Um, what we decided in class that would be useful would be to have an R squared instead of an R. So we just squared both sides. So we ended up with R squared equals one fourth Z squared. R squared is X squared plus Y squared. And then z squared is part of the um, cylindrical system. So I have now x squared um, plus y squared equals 1 fourth z squared. Um, if I shift it around a little bit, um, it starts to look like one of the equations back in 11.6. In particular, it's the elliptic cone. And this is the graph that we would end up with, roughly speaking. Um, I'm not su super you know, concerned about your graphs um, being perfect. I just need a sketch, okay? So a sketch will be fine. All right, so this is one of our coordinate systems. The other one is called spherical. Um, so spherical, um, the way that we have def we define it within at least most math books that I've seen, in particular the one we've got here, is we've got a point P, and it's represented by an ordered triple that's rho, theta, phi, okay? Rho looks like a P, kind of, with like a curly, you know, part on the end here, right? This is rho. Um, rho is actually measuring the distance from the origin, uh, very much like um, measuring the um, distance of R, very similar. Um, it's slightly different. It's not exactly that R is equal to rho. Um, there's there's some, some changes to that, but it's a similar idea. Theta is exactly the same theta. Um, it's the, the same angle that happens when your R value is positive. So like if I were working this over here, um, oops, one more back, my theta value would be on number two negative pi over four. It wouldn't be three pi over four, it'd be negative pi over four because it has to be the theta value that corresponds to an R value that's positive, okay? And then the angle phi is actually the angle between the positive x-axis and our point. So it's, if you see the picture down here in the bottom left corner, theta measures the angle between, on the xy plane, between our point and the positive x-axis, but phi measures the angle away from the x-axis in sort of the z direction. Some spherical to, court, uh, to, um, to rectangular measurements, um, you know, conversions. X is equal to rho sine phi cosine theta. Y is equal to rho sine phi sine theta. And Z is equal to rho cosine phi. And then going the other direction, rectangular to spherical. Rho squared is X squared plus Y squared equals Z, I mean, plus Z squared, right? So this looks very similar, except you've got the plus Z squared. Tangent one is the same. Tangent of theta is y over x. And the way that we measure phi is phi is measured as the arc cosine of z over the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So let's do some conversions, just like we did in the other system. First, we're going to do conversion of rectangular to spherical. I have 2, 2, 4 square root 2. That's x, y, z, right? So again, reminding myself. We need rho, we need theta, and we need phi. So rho is found by doing the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So if I find each of those components, I have 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared root of 2 squared, which is 4 plus 4 plus 32, or 40 underneath the radical. That simplifies to 2 radical 10. So that's rho. To find theta, I would have the tangent of theta equals y over x. y and x are both 2, so this is the tangent of theta equals 1, and that happens at pi over 4. And then um, our phi value is the arc cosine of z, which is 4 square root 2, over, and if you'll notice right here, actually in this, in this equation, I have the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared underneath my, you know, my denominator here, but that's really just rho. Um, we don't mix up our notation like that, but, but this piece down here, right, is actually rho. So over here, um, the rho I already found, which is 2 square root of 10, is actually the denominator of this particular fraction. If I simplify inside, I have 2 radical 5 over 5, or if you want, you can write it as 2 over radical 5. 
And that's not a unit circle value, so the best that we can do is to use our calculator to approximate. Three decimals, this would be 0.464. If we want to convert spherical to rectangular, going the other direction, right? Spherical means that this is rho, um, theta, and phi. Um, also, I, I mentioned in class, I forgot to mention here, that when you see phi written um, sort of in text print, you're going to see it look like that in your textbook, but when people write it down, it looks like this, and I have no idea why the difference is, but just be aware that those are actually the same Greek letter. All right, cool. So I need to find x, y, and z. Well, we have formulas for those very specifically. x is rho sine phi cosine theta. So if I evaluate that, I have 12 sine pi over 9, cosine 3 pi over 4. Approximation is negative 2.902. Y is rho sine phi sine theta, which is 12 sine pi ninths sine 3 pi over 4, which is positive 2.902 approximately. And then Z is rho cosine phi, so 12 cosine pi ninths, approximately 11.276. And this is actually a really good example right here of one where if you saw this ordered triple, uh, it'd be really difficult to know which system that you were working in, right? This actually looks like it could be in the rectangular system, which it, which it is, but it actually has the ability that it could be in a spherical system or maybe even a cylindrical system because those values could be measures of angles and so forth. So just you know, be aware that just because something doesn't have pies in it doesn't mean that it's not a spherical or a cylindrical um, you know, order triple. Um, all right, we're gonna go um, from a equation um, in rectangular form to a spherical equation. Um, we're starting with x squared plus y squared equals, I'm sorry, minus 3z squared equals 0. Obviously that's not super friendly, um, but if I were to move the 3z squared to the right and I were to add z squared to both sides, it would look actually a lot better because x squared plus y squared plus z squared is rho squared and I can make that substitution. On the right hand side I have 4 and I have z squared. Um, and then z is rho cosine phi, so I can re replace that and square things. So now I have rho squared equals 4 rho squared cosine squared of phi. Um, divide both sides by rho squared. I have 1 equals 4 cosine squared phi. Square, uh, divide by 4 and take a square root, um, and I end up with the cosine of phi is plus or minus 1 half. Um, and that actually, if I solve that, is the angle pi over 3. Um, one could talk about it being negative pi over 3 um, as well, but we're, we're looking at a shape of a cone if we do that. Convert spherical to rectangular. So we're going to go the direction. I have a rho equals 4 cosine phi. Um, well, the rho we could replace, but man, it would be nicer if I had rho squared. So the first conversion that I'd like to make actually is to recognize that z is equal to rho cosine phi. So if I were to solve for cosine of phi, I would have z over rho. So we see a replacement of cosine phi with z over rho. Um, that's actually fairly nice because then if I multiply rho to the other side, I have the rho squared that I just mentioned would be nicer on the left. Um, I'm going to go. So rho squared is x squared plus y squared equals z or plus z squared. And now it's still equal to 4z. So I actually have replaced all of the variables, you know, component-wise. Um, but then putting this into standard form and recognizing what the shape is to, to sketch it. Um, this is x squared plus y squared. And then we have to move the 4z to the left and complete the square. So minus 4z and then completing the square adds 4 to both sides. Um, factors as x squared plus y squared plus z minus 2 squared equals 4. Um, because the coordinates in front of each of the x, y, and z squareds are one, um, or the same really is the issue, um, we actually have a sphere on this one. And it's centered at 0, 0, 2 based on the equation. So if I were to draw this, again, it's a sketch, but what this is is it's a sphere shifted up to from the origin with a radius also of 2 because of the 4 over here on the left or on the right. So I have drawn over here on the right hand side a sphere. I'm not going to guarantee that it's perfectly of radius 2, but I do know for sure that it does hit the origin. It lies above the xy plane, and we would have this particular shape. Okay, so we, this is not complete. We have um, a few more conversions to do here. 
um, as I will post those on Wednesday. But for now, this is the homework assignment that will be assigned. Um, the part that we haven't covered, in case you get there and you're like, wait a minute, did she do this? Is we didn't do cylindrical to spherical and spherical back to cylindrical. We always went through rectangular. And so I'm going to show you how to sort of cut through the rectangular system if you're converting between the other two. And this, um, several, several of these problems will have that flavor to them.